people are complicated. You know, people are not just, you know, what you see, and they're not just like vitals, and they're not just, let me, ch you know, check your breathing. It, it goes deeper. Like, if you go through some personal stuff, like some personal trauma, I think that it's gonna affect you medically. How can you ask someone about their body? How can you ask somebody about their mind and not recognize their experiences in the world as they're living in that body, as they're thinking and having that mind? It really is about recognizing people as whole beings and not just body parts. To me, that's trauma-informed care. The majority of illnesses and conditions that people are treating in primary care settings are trauma-related, especially the ones that are the real heart issues that, that clinicians and patients are struggling with, substance use, chronic pain, obesity, things that providers are struggling so hard to change and help with and failing and feeling really frustrated. So if they really want to know their patients and really want to help them in this deep level, then, you know, learn the trauma-informed care way. One of our most beloved patients was murdered in this really terrible way by her husband. It awakened us to the fact that actually we weren't doing a very good job. We were effectively treating HIV, but when we scratched a little bit beneath the surface, we realized that 30% of our patients have PTSD, over half of our patients are depressed, 40% um, of our patients are using hard drugs, and then tons of women and people living with HIV across the spectrum are dying from preventable illnesses. I think the widespread impact of trauma and toxic stress on physical health is what has been the missing link. It's linked to poor health in later life heart disease, any kind of cardiovascular disease, uh, early sexual, uh, multiple sexual partners, early pregnancy, mental health issues, they're all related to those adverse childhood events. I experienced patients that um, were behaving in ways that were really stressful, cursing, yelling, really heightened emotions at the front desk, um, in my office, breakdowns. We might naturally ask ourselves, what is wrong with that person? Trauma-informed care is really about saying, what happened? Why would a person behave that way, rather than what's wrong? We want to give people good care, but we want them to thrive. Not just be healthy, but thrive. And it's very hard to thrive in this community. Exposure to potentially traumatic events happens across all socioeconomic backgrounds. Many, if not all, of our patients have a history of trauma, and also so do most of our staff and that, um, that plays a big role in how people interact with each other and how patients do or don't take care of their health. If you're going through some personal stuff, you're not gonna wanna take your meds. You're not gonna wanna take care of your health if you're depressed, if you're going through some mental health stuff. So I think that it's all related. It's all interrelated. I think one of the biggest frustrations that I've seen from my medical colleagues is frustration. Like, oh my gosh, I keep telling this patient the same thing over and over again. How many times are they gonna come in, not listen to what I recommend, and then have the same symptoms and then keep coming back for the same symptoms? And in medicine, typically what doctors do is they give advice. They tell you to eat healthier. They tell you to exercise. They tell you to check your insulin. And honestly, the medical field has been doing this for decades after decades after decades. One of the things when uh, 
someone reviews your programs, we have this for some, some grantees, and they want to know how many people have had a hemoglobin A1C done, how many people's blood pressure is under control, how many people have had check on whether they smoke. Those things are all important. But you could look great on that and not be giving good care. So we want to know about people's lives. How has your life changed? This is clearly working. And I, I can say that really confidently um, based upon a number of things. First, the effectual experience for, for providers is dramatic. I mean, our experience as providers has changed from being overwhelmed, from having a chaotic clinic, from telling each other, you know, the worst war stories possible as a way of coping, which is actually really just re-traumatizing, uh, to an experience where we're feeling like we are doing the absolutely best job possible. When I first came here, just the greeting alone, you know, just changed my mind about going to other doctors and so on because the way you were treated. And you could see their true concern about your welfare. You know, I, I picked that right up from going to different places. You know, so I came back again and I came back again. And next thing I know, they told me they had a Jimmy. I didn't know that. People come willingly. They're using more services. So they're understanding that their health is not just that medical service, but it's what they eat, how much you move, and the state of your soul. People that were kind of struggling with substance use and and trauma and homelessness. It's not like that has gone away, but what we've seen is people kind of having longer periods of stability, like maybe they've actually have now like found decent housing and they're doing harm reduction with their substance use or they're sober from substances for a period of time and maybe they slip, but they get back in touch with us more quickly than they used to. When we're viewing people more as a whole person that has had life experiences, rather than a caricature of their behavioral um, reactions, we start to then make another shift from being stressed out from this person to then being more empathetic. We then shift our behavior. So if I look at someone and I say, something's wrong with them, then that might give me permission to behave in ways that are not helpful. And so when I say what happened, then I am now mentally thinking, how can I help this person? Is there something that I can do that can make their experience better? Once you start communicating where you're, you're not being dictated to, you know, someone is actually asking you, how do you feel about this? And how, you know, it builds that trust. You know, it's like, wow, they actually heard me, you know, and I see it. The staff or the clinicians, your medical care provider, are not just interested in your HIV. It's like, okay, your T cells are this, your viral loads that. They're more interested in your life. So you're able to talk about things, I guess, that maybe led up to being at risk for HIV from your past. And the providers, they're better able to communicate, I think, with, with us. And it makes us feel comfortable to talk about whatever. We know we're, we know we're not gonna be judged for, you know, for our lives. We did not come down here and say, by the way, we're putting a health center at 11th and Parish. People wouldn't have used it. So this way, they were part of the process. In our original building, they helped design it. They met with the architects. And so this was and still is a very strong community partnership. What I've learned taking care of people with really intense trauma is a lot can happen just by understanding why people are acting the way they're acting. This idea that trauma-informed care and becoming trauma-informed is this huge heavy lift. In truth, if we don't provide services in a trauma-informed way, what is the heavy lift is services that are not effective. And so what trauma-informed care means does not have to be the most elaborate, detailed, research-heavy, protocol, assessment-based approach. It can start with education and then kind of move forward. The training piece is really um, key and it doesn't need to be expensive or too time-consuming. We have three core trainings that we have everyone go through when they start working here and the modules can be done in two hours or less. 
this change process is incremental and you can begin this as an individual person in your clinic and make a meaningful difference, not only to your patients, but to you as a practitioner. It's not radical to think that our job as primary care providers and why we went into primary care in all of our different disciplines um, is to actually help patients heal. I mean, that's not radical at all. It's self-evident, but we're, it's like taught out of us. And what we're doing now in this movement towards trauma-informed primary care is to teach that back in, is to help people realize that their vision for why they went into this to begin with is to help people heal and to, and to connect with them in that process um, and to heal themselves in that process and to, and to have joy in, in that process. Man is the only animal that cries because man alone sees the difference between what is and what could be. And I think that's the hallmark of public health. We don't just look at something and say, isn't it a shame there's so much trauma? Isn't it a shame there's so much obesity? But it doesn't have to be that way. We're not going to fix it, but collectively we can work on it. So that's the quote that guides me very often. It doesn't have to be that way. Members of this community deserves a good, healthy, happy life.